In late April 2014, a large tornado outbreak would devastate regions in the Deep South. Over 80 tornadoes would be confirmed over a four-day period, with two being considered violent. One tracked through central Arkansas, reaching probable EF5 status, and the other tracked through Mississippi for almost 35 miles, killing 10. Today, we'll be discussing the setup behind this prolific outbreak, the tornadoes, and the impact. We'll also look at how tornadoes are rated and why these tornadoes are so often debated. Relatively speaking, 2014 was a very quiet year up until the 27th. There were less than 130 tornadoes with one tornadic fatality. The entirety of March and most of April were quiet, with the strongest tornado being an EF3 on the 25th of April in Beaufort County, North Carolina. Things wouldn't stay quiet for long, however, as the following days looked very conducive for severe weather. On the 27th, a closed low set up in the northern Great Plains and a short wave was present at 500 millibars. Wind shear values were exceedingly high, as shown in photographs. Instability was also concerningly high, with the region averaging over 3,500 joules per kilogram of CAPE, an explosive amount. Both temperatures and dew points were sufficient, with both sitting above 70 degrees. The progression looked something like this. Supercells would fire in the open warm sector. These would remain discrete, bringing the threat for long track, strong to violent tornadoes. After some time, these would congeal into a large QLCS or line of thunderstorms, transitioning the risk to a damaging wind risk. Seeing this, the SPC went ahead and issued a high risk with a 30% hatched risk for tornadoes. High risks are rare, with only one or two being issued per year, and some years there are none. They indicate a high probability of a major tornado outbreak or derecho event. At 3.35 p.m., a PDS, or Particularly Dangerous Situation Tornado Watch, was issued. These are also rare, and are only issued when there is high confidence that a significant event will unfold. In the mid to late afternoon, discrete supercells fired in the open warm sector, and the stage was set for a long-lived, intense tornado outbreak. The supercell that would produce the deadly EF4 fired in southwestern Arkansas at around 5.15 p.m., and at around 7 p.m., it dropped its first tornado. The tornado immediately began producing high-end EF3 damage as it swept a home clean off of its foundation, and the first three deaths from the tornado came from this home. For the next 13 miles of its path, it tracked over mainly forested areas, producing mainly EF1 to EF2 level damage, but a cell tower was collapsed. As the tornado crossed the Arkansas River, it strengthened dramatically, almost immediately producing violent damage to homes as they were completely destroyed, and another fatality occurred in one of these destroyed homes. It's around this time that the National Weather Service on Little Rock issued a tornado emergency for Mayflower and Valonia. If you watched the last video, you'll remember that tornado emergencies are the highest form of tornado warning that are only issued when there is confirmation of a large, intense tornado that is posing an immediate threat to human life. Shortly after, the tornado entered Mayflower at EF4 intensity, severely damaging or completely destroying many homes and businesses. An RV dealership was completely destroyed in the tornado as RVs at the business were tossed and destroyed. Three would lose their lives before the tornado would leave Mayflower and homes northeast of the town would be severely damaged. The next town in the tornado's path would be Valonia. The residents in the town took shelter as the tornado would strike the town at EF4 intensity. Structures in Valonia would be severely damaged, and homes in northeastern Valonia would be swept clean off of their foundations. Valonia Intermediate School would lose its top floor as the tornado violently struck it. This is the point where the tornado reached its maximum intensity, and it's often debated whether this tornado reached EF5 status here. A large section of the neighborhood would be completely destroyed, with over a dozen homes being swept clean off of their foundations. The damage from this section in Valonia looks very reminiscent of the damage left in the Double Creek Estates from Gerald. The tornado took the lives of nine people in Valonia. The tornado briefly continued northeast, gradually weakening, and finally, at around 8 o'clock p.m., and after tracking over 40 miles, the tornado lifted in White County. The end result of this violent tornado was 16 fatalities, almost 200 injuries, and the destruction of many communities. Over $200 million of damage occurred as many homes and businesses were completely destroyed. This is one of the most widely debated tornado ratings, as many believe that this tornado is one of the top contenders in recent history for the EF5 rating. As many were hearing of the devastation in Arkansas, others were watching the next day with the potential for another violent tornado day. The supercells that moved through Arkansas the previous day congealed into a squall line and moved through Tennessee and areas north. Another dangerous atmosphere was setting up in the south, this time in Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee. Seeing the great potential for another violent tornado day, another high risk would be put into place by the Storm Prediction Center. A PDS tornado watch would be issued over the high risk area. The stage was once again set for another tornado day, and the wait was not long. 
By early afternoon on the 28th, discrete supercells began to fire in western Mississippi and quickly began producing significant tornadoes. A long-tracked EF3 tracked through the Tupelo area, killing one person. Videos of this tornado are some of the scariest tornado videos, as it took on the look of a massive rain-wrapped wedge. South of that tornado was another supercell that was trying to put down a tornado, and as it passed northeast of Carthage, it produced one of the most violent tornadoes of the past decade. The tornado that would go on to destroy much of Louisville would touch down just northeast of Carthage, Mississippi. As it moved northeast, it slowly strengthened, producing progressively more intense damage, and as it crossed Hartness Road at EF4 intensity, it swept several structures clean off of their foundations. But the most intense damage came from tree debarking. Some of the most extreme tree damage ever observed came from this location, as trees were debarked to an extreme extent. This tornado is another top contender for the EF5 rating. The tornado continued northeast, still at EF4 intensity, destroying many homes and businesses. A large metal building with chickens inside was completely demolished. Over 200,000 chickens were killed as the facility was completely destroyed. Videos from this tornado show a massive wedge tornado hidden behind curtains of rain. It was truly an invisible monster. The tornado then made a slight northern turn, putting Louisville in the path. A tornado emergency would be issued for Louisville by the National Weather Service in Jackson, indicating that a violent tornado was on the ground. As the tornado entered the town, many structures would be exposed to winds up to 185 miles an hour, as many structures would be heavily damaged or completely destroyed. An apartment complex on the southeastern side of the town would be completely demolished. A daycare owner would lose her life, shielding a child as the structure was exposed to EF4 level winds. As the tornado moved into northeastern Louisville, more well-constructed homes would be swept clean off of their foundations. Ten people would lose their lives before the tornado would leave the town. From there, the tornado would gradually weaken, and at around 4.45, the tornado would lift just northeast of Louisville. Ten would lose their lives in Louisville, over 80 would be injured, and the town would experience major damage from the tornado. Many homes and businesses would be heavily damaged or completely destroyed. Before the 28th would end, several more long-tracked, intense tornadoes would touch down across Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee. In total across both days, 35 would lose their lives, over 400 more would be injured, and over $1 billion of damage would be done. It would go down as one of the most infamous tornado outbreaks in recent history. However, this is also one of the most controversial tornado outbreaks. Both the Valonia tornado and the Louisville tornado are debated to have been at EF5 strength as previously mentioned. However, neither were given that rating due to a lack of build quality in the structures they impacted. It is noted in the Valonia survey that the tornado had likely EF5 intensity, but it didn't hit any structures that could support that rating. It's been 10 years since this devastating tornado outbreak, and the towns have mostly recovered. Valonia has been rebuilding, and despite the tornado, the population has actually increased since the tornado. Louisville has been recovering, and their population has stayed similar since. Keep in mind, while these tornadoes do spark controversy, it is important to remember that these have major human impacts that should not be overlooked. Before I end this video, I would like to thank you all for watching. This took a lot of time and work, so I appreciate you watching until the end. If you at all found this enjoyable or informative, please consider subscribing as it helps me out a lot. Also, I have linked down in the description a lot of sources that have a lot of good information on the outbreak if you'd like to learn more. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later on MediaCube.